Hi, I'm Kirsten Kelly, and today's lesson is a simple grid. It's one of my favourites. Generally have it built in my arena most of the time because it keeps the horses sharp and light on their feet. So it's very simple, so it's easy to build. You only need three jumps. You need to have a vertical to one stride to a bounce, and then you can jump it backwards, a bounce to a vertical. The reason why I like it so much is that it teaches the horse to rock his weight back and keep light on his feet. It's not too complicated, so for winter time when the horses aren't too fit, it just keeps them fresh and alive. This grid really helps keep the back supple as well. Whenever you're jumping bounces, it really teaches the horse to sit on his hindquarters and round his back up and use his neck. And with the having the one stride coming into it, it means that you always get a nice shot into the one stride so that you're prepared for the bounce as well. So first off to start off with, I want you to come in the canter. I want you to come around the corner. I want you to look early, see if you can guess when you're six strides away from it. Count that either out loud or in your head so that every time you canter a fence, you're thinking about finding a distance six strides away, not three strides away, okay? Then I want you to jump in here. You've got one stride which is uh, 6.2 metres, and then you've got three and a half metres to the bounce, okay? And so what I want you to do is we're just going to jump through it a couple of times this way, and then I'm going to build the bounce out bigger. Once I'm happy with that, then I'm going to turn it around and jump it backwards. So this distance isn't a massive big distance, it's more just a little bouncy stride. If your horse is jumping in and he's a little bit green and he's finding this distance too hard, it's too short, this plank here you could put right smack dab in the middle and that's going to help encourage him to make a round bouncy stride rather than a big flat one. This horse is quite used to this exercise so he finds it pretty easy to rock back. I'm going to make this vertical that size because he's done this exercise a lot. If of course your horse is greener, you'd just gradually build it up a little bit bigger. So the first, because the distance is short, that first X is not going to get bigger, it's going to stay, it's going to stay tiny. It's just to set you up for the bounce. So you're looking early, thinking of your six strides. So although this first element here always stays little, that's your setup distance to get you a nice distance for your bounce. That's really its only purpose. Okay, these ones, this won't get made into a massive fence. I think this is probably big enough, but we can build the next one bigger. Only do one thing at a time though. I've made this bigger, which is gonna make this bounce even harder. Okay, and then once I'm happy with that, then I'll put the back bounce up. And you see that time there, he was much tidier in front because I gave him a little bit of a ground pole as well. One more time. Okay, the one thing that bouncers do which really help them improve is it makes them use their neck. So you get that feeling that they drop their neck, pull their shoulders up and sit. If the horse knocks this element down, what it means is not that he's been slack, but he was trying so hard to make that shape and get his hind feet planted on the ground so he could pull his shoulders up quickly that he got a little ahead of himself. So he actually worked harder, not that he was actually slack. If he's knocking this element down, this shows to me that he's either weak and he needs more tuning up or that he's lazy. So then this is what you know makes me like, oh, come on horse, work a bit harder. This knocking this down doesn't worry me at all because he knocked it down behind and it was because he was trying to get his weight back. That's it, so now at least the neck is just a little bit softer. Good boy. So you can see there it makes his feet quick off the ground. It makes him think about being light footed rather than thinking about being a little slow off the ground. It makes it quicker and snappier. So now we're gonna change it a little bit and we're gonna jump it both ways. So of course we're not going to have a big jump in. We're going to have them so that they are of equal height. So we have a ground pole here to this one. And again, this changes the dynamics of it. So we've had our one stride here, which was easy. It was just to set her up for the bounce. When you jump back over this, the bounce is going to be, you know, the little tune up. But also this stride here is going to feel very short afterwards. Because remember, it's only 6.2 metres. Okay, so when you pop over this bounce, it's up to you, the rider, to then jump in 
lift your chin so that it brings your shoulders back so it keeps your core engaged and your body upright so that you give him the chance to be able to pull his shoulders back okay it's just again going to stay tiny because it's a short stride so to ride this a little bit straighter she's using a little bit of closing the outside door with the outside rein she's keeping his neck straighter that's it so that was a good effort because she showed it quite dramatically. She was quite straight with the outside and you could see that as she shut the door with that outside rein, he wasn't able to push his shoulders over quite so much. Still had his quarters in and a little bit and his shoulder pushing out, but she was able to fix it and then she overfixed it. But then by the time you got to the, the, the black one, you actually had him much straighter. So the main problems that you get with this grid is one that the horse jumps in too big and he finds it hard to make this one stride. Rather than making it longer, I would place a plank in the middle here so that it regulates that stride. The other thing is, is that he's a little bit slow and dangly over the bounce. So then I would roll the ground pole out so that it helps him get his front legs out of the way. Drifting is another thing that horses do. They, because the distances are short and it makes them work hard, to make it easier for themselves, they push a little towards the weak side. So then I would either put high armed X's to it or I would put um, a guide rail. So just having a rail, just like this, I would put a, a, plan, a rail on like this. Probably you would see it worse at the second element, at the last element, so then you would place this so it stays you know, keeps them in the centre. Remember, if you do guide rails, always start with it here, then here, and then here, unless your horse is used to jumping with a guide rail all the time. Another problem that you might encounter is that when you're coming round to ride it backwards, you may get a little anxious about riding the bounce and ride it backwards. Remember, always try to maintain a good quality canter and count out loud so that you keep thinking about the distance and the rhythm. Good boy. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Kirsten Kelly Equestrian. And if you're enjoying this content, you could become a patron and then you get to contribute to making these great videos and you get great rewards.